The rope has served me well twice already. The rope has served me well twice already. Maybe it'll hold up for a third time too. The rope has served me well twice already. Maybe it'll hold up for a third time too. Okay, the time had to come sooner or later. Ah! Oh, um, hello? Another one. For years no one visits and now all this activity? I, uh, I have something to do up top. See you later. The ugly dwarf turned and made to leave that sinister place. Hey, I'm not a dwarf, I'm a gnome. And Mum says I'm a handsome little fella too. He said defensively, but this did not impress the darkness much. Next, the dwarf said... We can't. Well, we could, but we just don't want to. We are gods. We can do anything. You're gods? He froze, as if struck by a bolt of lightning, whilst the implications of this danced wildly around his head. Um, actually, no, not really. But you must. You are speaking to gods. What exactly are implications? Hey, hey! Two cannibals are eating a clown, and one says to the other, He tastes a bit funny! <laughs> oh, do be quiet. I'm trying to create atmosphere here. Isn't it about time for a riddle? Not that I have anything against creepy voices from the dark, but maybe we could have a little light here? Why is it dark? And what could you do to make it light? The young hero stood in a beam of light, surrounded by the deepest darkness, and the voices said, Two trolls look up into the night sky. One asks the other, What do you think? Is there life on the moon? And the other replies, Well, of course! There's a light on, isn't there? <laughs> Fantastic. If you're gods, then can't you just say something like, let there be light, and, and it gets all bright in here? Ah, uh, two trolls are looking up into the night sky, and one says to the other, what do you think? Is there life on the moon? Not again. Of course we could create some light. Or it could simply just be light in this cave. But where's the challenge in that? said the little dwarf. Why does everything always have to be so complicated? And stamped his foot on the ground. Say what? You have to stamp your foot on the ground. What kind of gods are you? Well, we are... Wait! He has to create light first. Did a rat in a hat pass through here? Asked the gnome in a brave voice. He, however, didn't know at this point that he would be leaving the caves without his friend. You know something about Remy? That's what one calls foreshadowing. It's a device used to keep the audience entertained. Showing something other than complete darkness might also be helpful. He's got to solve the riddle first. So what's with Remy? Was he here? Where did he go? Oh, oh I've got another one! One politician says to the other, I don't know why no one likes us. We don't do anything. <laughs> and what exactly has that got to do with the story? Thank you for the conversation. I, um, I'll look around a bit. Not without any light. Hey, hey, two cannibals are eating a clown, and one says to the other, 
He tastes a bit funny. <laughs> Well, that... hmm, that was a good one. You scared him away. He liked my jokes. That's called irony. <laughs> but what's so funny about that? Aside from the light coming through the hole, you can hardly see a thing down here. And I think I need more than just a torch or something like that. It sounds like I'm in a fairly large cavern. Hello? Are you still there? Where else would we be? Can't you give me a little help here? There's a little rat sitting up there who misses his uncle. Emotion overcame the dwarf and tears of anger and exhaustion welled up in his eyes. That's not true! And I'm not a dwarf! You must understand, the protagonist must come up against problems. No conflicts, no story. Put as many obstacles in his way as you like, but can you still help me? Uh, perhaps a joke would calm the situation down. <laughs> no. no. Up's even worse than down. Wilbur, have you found Uncle Remy? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Timmy? Yeah? You can hardly see your hand in front of your face down there. I need a light. We could build a torch. Not only is it pretty dark down there, but pretty scary as well. A flickering torch that casts shadows? No thanks. I need something different. Something that illuminates the whole place. I've got to get back. You can do it. It looks like the Van Buren's girls' abominations have even found their way down here. Someone with taste couldn't bear to have this stuff around any longer and threw it away. Hmm, mostly toys. And, oh, what's this? A hand mirror. I'm going to take it with me. Could come in handy somewhere. Without Gulliver, Esther and Nate, everything down here looks even more desolate. eventually gets to the magic school staff room where the transformed archmage is being held captive. Unfortunately, I'm about ten times too big to fit through the pipe. Ivo? 
want. Not that I'm not overjoyed to see you, but what are you doing in Seastone? I need to talk to Archmage Alistair. There's a little... Uh, problem. Unless it's about catching flies with your tongue, he's not going to be any help to you at the moment. Well, the problem can wait. I hope. Marcus has completely disappeared since the fight in the staff room. Do you think he's still in town? Yes, I fear so. Like flies to Arbor's pot, dark sorcerers are attracted to power. A little girl with seemingly unlimited magic. He'll try anything to exploit that. And he can transform himself into anyone. Be careful about whom you trust up there. Who says he's up here? He could be down there with you. We must both keep our eyes peeled. Remy said that much of the city's been transformed. Is it really that bad? Some buildings have been badly affected, but nothing that couldn't be fixed with a few flaming torches. What's worse is that some people have also been transformed, and no one dares to say what they think anymore. That is terrible! Van Buren's intoxicated by power, worse than Joffrey. She's insane, she's going to ruin our world, and she has the means to do it. Luckily you're here, Ivo. We'll stop them. Wouldn't be the first time. Where's the council leader? Whatever you do, don't let her catch you. It's okay. She's on her way to the elf burrow. She wants to pay my mother a visit. Doesn't that worry you? Nah, she'll get nowhere in the elf burrow. Elf protective magic is powerful. So it's just a question of how long it takes Van Buren to figure that out. She'll be furious. It's best we're no longer here by the time she gets back. For my search for Remy, I need something I can use to light an entire cave. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Thanks. I have to get going. Don't get caught. Good luck. Keep your ears stiff. <laughs>